What if I told you you don't need a car to go fast because with Photoshop, you can make things look a little bit different. Let's get into it. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna talk about a really fun blur effect to make it look like you're going light speed, whether you're in a car, running, or whatever else with Photoshop. So the way this effect works is by actually adding a motion blur to your background and not affecting you or your subject or whatever you're trying to make look fast. This effect can be made really simply and a lot of it can be done with some automatic selection tools and content aware. So to see how this all works, let's hop into Photoshop and get started. So the photo that we're working with today is this photo of a guy on a motorcycle and it already looks like he's going pretty fast because some of the background is blurred. But to really sell this effect, I wanna blur this background even more. So whether you're working with an image that has this amount of background blur or as no background blur at all, the steps that we talk about today are still gonna work really well for you. The only time that this effect will not work super well, or at least not look convincing, is if the person isn't actually moving because it's nice to get some motion blur in the tires or if someone's running, it's nice to get a bit of motion blur in their arms or feet. So then it really helps to sell this effect as if it was in camera or something like that. Now, before we actually separate the subject from the background, let's first duplicate this layer because we need the subject on one layer and the background on another. So with that background layer selected, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer onto a new layer. Now I'll go and select my object selection tool, then I'll click and drag to make a rectangular marquee selection around my subject, but then when I let go, it's gonna snap to the edges of my person. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a bunch of these easy ways of cutting out images in Photoshop, then make sure to check out my other tutorial all about that down in the description below. As you can see here, the object selection tool did a pretty good job, but it did miss a few areas. So let's touch it up by grabbing the quick selection tool and then just painting over some of these areas to adjust that selection and make things look a little bit better for us. Now this doesn't have to be super perfect because we're adding a blur and then we can adjust the layer mask later on if need be, but you want this to look as good as possible because it's just gonna make your life a little bit easier later on. Now if you're dealing with something that's a very complicated selection, then it might be better to use something like the pen tool where you can manually select everything that you need rather than having to deal with these automatic selections and Photoshop not understanding what you want. So with all of this done here, this looks pretty good to me. I'll call that a win for now. And I'll just click on my layer one and then add a layer mask. So now that's going to basically put my subject on his own layer separate from the background. Now we need to essentially remove our subject from the background completely. So with our layer mask, hold command or control, click on that layer mask thumbnail to reactivate that selection. Now click on that background layer and what we're gonna do is right click in that selection and then go down to content aware fill. This is gonna open up a new dialog box where we can basically replace our subject with more background so then when we blur it, we don't have streaks of our subject left over behind with our blur effects. What happened here, there are some bits of leftover area. So I'll grab the lasso tool option right here and then I'll just extend some of this. So we're basically gonna be just outside of the entire selection here. So I'm gonna quickly go around the motorbike just to extend the selection area and then give content aware fill a little bit more area to play with. So it looks good to me there. It's now extended that selection for us. Notice how the marching ants have moved outwards. And then that just helps to get rid of those harsh edges that were left over here. Now, if you notice the background looks a little bit warped and wonky, but that's okay because we're gonna have our subject blocking that area anyways and it's gonna be blurred, so you really won't even notice what's going on. This usually would be a bigger issue with other content aware scenarios, but since we're doing this motion blur speed effect, it doesn't really matter. So with all of that looking pretty good to me, I'm gonna set my output settings to current layer. So it's basically just going to apply these new adjustments directly onto that background layer, and then it will be good to go. So clicking okay, it's now removed the subject from my background layer. So if I view that, it's now completely taken care of, and then I'll just press Command or Control D to deselect that. Now with our background layer, we're gonna first convert it into a smart object. So right click and then go down to convert to smart object. From here, we're gonna now add a motion blur of some type. We can either add a motion blur filter or a radial blur filter. If you're adding a motion blur, that is only if your subject is directly stacked against the background. So it's basically straight on to your photo. If 
if you have any type of depth in your image, like we do here, see how the lines are diagonal pointing this direction in the image, that means we'll need to use a radial blur to create that sense of depth going backwards. So with my background layer selected, I'll go to filter down here to blur and then to radial blur because this photo has that depth in it. But again, if you are working with a photo that is stacked straight against a background, looking directly at it, then the motion blur is gonna be the better option for you. Anyways, clicking on the radial blur option here, I'm gonna set my blur point to right along where the corner of the road is down here and then set the blur method to zoom so that we're zooming away from it. It's gonna create that speed effect that we're looking for. Now you can increase or decrease this amount just right here, but for now I'll just leave it right around 60 to 70 and then click okay. That's gonna apply that blur effect only to the background and then blend everything together. Now for this photo, it doesn't really look very realistic out of the gate and that's because the road has become so blurred from this effect. Luckily, since we use a smart filter, we can click on the smart filter layer mask and actually mask out some of this blur so it's a little bit less noticeable. So what I want to do is just because I'm only affecting the bottom portion of my image right by the bike, I'm gonna grab the gradient tool and then set the gradient to a foreground transparent gradient like so. I'll then set my foreground color to black and then with that smart filters layer mask selected, I'm just gonna click and drag up to make that transparent. And it's gonna help to blend in some of that road a little bit better. And because that road was already blurred in the initial photo, it still looks nice and realistic in our image. Now the same thing around the tires here, the shadows are looking a little bit wonky. So with that layer mask selected, grabbing my brush tool, I can just paint white onto that layer mask and it's gonna add some of those shadows back in and then help make those tires look a little bit more realistic and nice. So now that you've basically created this effect, you might wanna go back and change how much blur you've added. Maybe it's too much or maybe it's too little. If I double click on the blur filter right here, it's gonna reopen that option for us and then I can bring down the amount like so, click okay. It's gonna change that effect for us just a little bit. Now it looks a little bit less overkill and not like we're going warp speed and Star Trek kind of thing. And with that, we have completed this zooming blur effect by turning this on and off. You can see the difference that that makes to blur the background, streak it out and make it look like our subject is going a lot faster than he really is. Now, this effect can be created in camera with a slow shutter speed, but it's gonna be a little bit harder to make sure that your subject is sharp because you have to track them nicely or you have to be in another vehicle following along and then it's just a little bit more planning going on to get this kind of photo. Now with that said, even if you are just stationary, it's still possible to get this kind of basic foreground blur just by moving your camera as you take the photo. So then you can get a little bit of base blur before you create this effect, and then it helps to make things look a little bit more realistic later on. Then once everything's complete, you can go and add whatever other image adjustments you would like, and you can look like you're going super fast with the help of Photoshop. So that is how to create the speed blur effect in Photoshop using a motion blur or a radial blur. Now in this tutorial, I use the radial blur because I had that depth in my photo. But again, if your background is stacked right behind your subject, then you're gonna wanna use a motion blur instead because that's going to just make more sense for the way the image is laid out. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from bewellcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.